Hello, welcome to our final video on accessibility. I'm Julian and in this video I'm going to take you through a number of ways to test your website's accessibility. One of the first things to mention is that bolt-on accessibility plugins such as UserWay and Accessibe don't make the build of your website accessible. They're great for users without existing setups to control content through preferences, but they won't fix any underlying issues your website has. So if you're a government organization or you're aiming to adhere to a certain level of accessibility, this isn't going to make that happen. Also be aware that users with access requirements will often already have their own way of accessing content through customizing their own interface and systems. Okay, so let's get to testing. There are a number of levels when it comes to testing your site. We're gonna start from the most basic and move to more involved as we go. The first thing you'll need to do when it comes to testing is to decide on what you're actually testing. So this could be a particular page or it might be something very specific that has come up, such as how images are treated. In this video, we're gonna do a site-wide test, but testing software is more on a page-by-page -page basis. So we'll have to decide on what pages we want to test. Now you can use something like the Website Accessibility Conformance Evaluation Methodology approach, which is what gov.uk uses, but this approach is really for huge sites. So if you have a reasonably small site, a more common sense approach is likely going to work best for you. So what do we mean by common sense? Well, if you think about the site you're going to test, break down the different types of pages you have on that site. If we take a theater site, for an example, we've got homepage, which is pulling in teasers from across the site. It's likely got a what's on page, and then there'll be a hundred, hundreds of pages of show pages underneath that. Then we might have a new section, and again, hundreds of article pages underneath that, and an about page. There might also be a set of pages for the payment process, but we do the purchase pathway pages at a different time, as these are often embedded pages from an external supplier. So while we have hundreds of pages, we don't need to test them all, as really we have only six or seven different types of pages. So as a rule, try and find a page for each of these sections, which is as many different types of content on them as possible. So now we know what we're gonna test, now let's look at how we're gonna test. So the first thing we're gonna do is load these pages into a browser. And the first test we're gonna do is on Google Chrome. Once the page is loaded, right click on the mouse, and we can select inspect. Once that window is opened up, we can then navigate to the Lighthouse tab. From here, we can select whether we want to test this page as a desktop page or a mobile page. And we would suggest you choose accessibility and best practices from the categories checkbox. Then simply press analyze page load button and wait for your results. You'll get a score out of 100 with a long list of audits that will run to test the accessibility. The score will be color coded in red, amber, and green with the goal being to get green and ideally 100%. Below the score, you might see a few other items that go into more detail and you can go into each of these sections to see a little bit more about the issues that is brought up. Now it's important not to take this score for granted. We've often found specifically around contrast that it doesn't always get it 100% right. But it's a great start to get an overall sense of how well the page has been built. Now things that Lighthouse doesn't check, but one which we'll have to do if we want to ensure the site is accessible is around magnification and tabbing through the site. We ran through this a little in a previous video, but in simple terms, it's a case of closing down Lighthouse, reloading the page, and then pressing tab. Tab will jump you from link to link, and you'll need to make sure all links are highlighted and visible, and they all have borders around them as you navigate through that page. If you can't see all the links, then there is an issue that will need to be fixed. As well as this, we'd advise zooming into the page through the magnification ability. To do this, press Alt and plus button, and you should be able to see at the top of the browser a percentage going up. You need to get up to 400%. Once you're there, have a look at the page you're on, and you're looking for any overlaying text or general visual issues that might cause an issue when consuming the content. This is also a great time to explore any potential contrast issues you might have on that page. Go through the page, and if you think there are any issues where colors don't look quite as defined as they should, grab a color picker and pop it into a contrast checker. I'll pop a link to a contrast checker in the video description. So now it's just a case of rinse and repeat. 
run the lighthouse across all your chosen pages to see if any issues come up due to them having slightly different templates, increase the page magnification and check for basic contrast issues. So we've done an initial overview using an automatic process and also with tab, we have gone through and done a quick check to see that we can navigate around these pages. Now, for most occasions, this is gonna be enough to understand if your site is in need of improvement when it comes to accessibility, but we can do more. I hope you're enjoying the video. Don't forget to like if you are, and do consider subscribing. It helps get these videos out there. The next block of testing will go deeper into the pages. We will specifically be looking at how these pages are built in terms of semantic HTML and ARIA, and also whether they are built well enough to be fully understandable for screen readers. The reason we do these deeper tests is twofold. Firstly, we want to understand if the page is built correctly. And then secondly, it's a good test of whether the content has been correctly tagged or annotated to ensure people understand the context of the content. The first round of testing is on a different browser. This time we use Firefox. We use Firefox to do a few visual tests and also some content tests. While we might well have passed the contrast tests in Lighthouse, Firefox is a great feature that allows us to see sites with different contrast filters. This can be really helpful to get a sense of how your pages might be viewed by users with different visual abilities. So in the same way as Chrome, we load the page up, right click and select inspect accessibility properties. Once here, we get a similar window. Just below the main menu of this window, we have a row of options. One of these options being simulate. This allows you to select a number of presets which transforms the page mimicking how someone with color blindness might see that page. This is a good way to understand any issues your color choices might have on people when viewing your site. Firefox also allows you to break down the page further through other features, and they can further highlight issues around contrast, labels, and keyboard navigation. The great thing about Firefox is that the help around accessibility is also there. So if you're unsure what something means, there's nearly always a little explanation icon that you can press to get further information on how the element should be made correctly. The final way of testing is through a site called WebAIM. I'll put a link to the site in the video description. The site is really helpful in helping you understand any obvious issues around the pages, specifically around ARIA tags. All you need to do is go to the WebAIM page, paste in the page you're looking to test. It'll bring in that page with icons on top and it'll break down in a similar way to all the other testing in amber, red and green as to any issues around that particular page. I would say this is the easiest way to locate any specific issues on a page, but often does change the style of the page in terms of its font. So it's not the best for weighing up design elements, but it will highlight whether your font styles are consistent on a page and whether your labels for your images are correct and it'll highlight any contrast issues. I think that's about covered it today, but if there's a specific aspect of this that you feel we went over to briefly or you'd like to know more about, do drop us a comment below and we can give you some further info. Equally, if you'd like to see one aspect in a longer video, let us know and if we get enough requests, then we can make that for you. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. <laughs>